Hello world, I'm Nick Proud and thanks for joining me for another set of tips and tricks for C-sharp. Today we're going to be looking at the lambda for each, another way of writing out your for each loops over lists. So there's a typical way to iterate over lists. Um, well, there's many different ways we can iterate over lists. Uh, you can use a for loop, a for each loop, um, or a, mod a slightly modified for each loop, which is what we're going to look at today. So first of all, I'm going to just uh, create a list in C Sharp, and then I'm going to show you the conventional way that we would do a for each over that list and do some kind of operation over each index in the list. And then I'm going to talk about an alternative way of writing that same for each loop using what's called a lambda expression. So I've got a console application here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method for our example. So I'm just going to say this is going to be a private void uh, process list. So we just want something that we can use for a demo. And then I'm going to just make a very simple um, string list. Uh, and that's going to have a set of names in it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to create var names. Uh, equals new list of type string. Okay, so that's just going to be a set of names. And then I'm going to put some names into that list. So names.add, uh, we'll put Bob. Then I'm going to put another one in there. It's going to be self centered, I put my own name in there. Uh, and then we'll put in names.add uh, Jenny. So we've got three people, okay, we've got three names in that list, and we want to just say for each name in that list, um, what's the name, and if it's a particular name, take a certain action. Very, very simple uh, list iteration. So you can see Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio 22 giving me the lovely new um, AI assisted IntelliSense, uh, but I'm gonna write it out uh, so that I keep sharp. Uh, so I'm gonna say for each var name in names, and then we're going to look for a particular name. Okay, so this is probably not the way you would do it, usually. It's probably not the optimum way for saying, uh, find a particular name in a list. But this is just for the purposes of a demo. Uh, so I'm going to say, if name is equal to Nick. So I'm going to try and look for my name in this list. Then we'll write it out to the console. So console.write line uh, name. Okay. So that is basically what we're going to do. Um, and then to actually run this, I'm going to say in the main function, so this is the function that will is our entry point into the console application. Uh, I'm going to say um, run the method process list, which I need to make static because this is a console application. And so when we run the application, it will just run that method. It will iterate through the list. It will say, if the name that I'm currently on is equal to Nick, then we'll write that out to the console. I'm just going to put a console.read line under that as well, just to keep the terminal showing. OK, so let's just run that. So there we go. It's just printed out my name because it's found it. Let's put something in a little bit more complex. Let's just print out some more information. So. Uh, I'm going to say instead um, found um, found name at let's get rid of this. Let's write out the position that we found it in in the list, just just out of interest. So found name at index number, and then we'll use uh, names dot index of name just to show what position it was found in in the list there we go so we found nick at index number one which makes sense because i added it here as the second item in the list uh, so starting at zero item one will be nick cool so that's basically it for a for reach for a basic for reach but there's another way of writing it as there usually is with c sharp there's lots of different pieces of syntactic sugar or um, shorthand or other ways of writing out this stuff which make it either more readable um, or quicker to write or sometimes even you know in less lines of code um, but what I want to demonstrate to you is a particular way of doing this which is the dot for each method now every list every generic list in the system 
lists.generic namespace, I think, off the top of my head, forgive me if I'm wrong, um, has uh, a for each method. So you can see here we've got a names list, which is just a list of type string. If we were to put a dot after that names list and then start typing for, we can see there's a method here called for each. And what that will do is it will perform a specified action on each element in the list. So instead of writing out for each item in list, we just say this list dot for each do some stuff. And the way we write the instruction to tell the list um, what to do, the actual action, is the lambda element. So if you haven't um, come across lambda expressions before, in a nutshell, it is basically a functional expression, which means passing in an input and then for, for that input, do something to it and, and result in an output. So you're going to see some syntax here, which you may have not seen before if, you've not, if you're not familiar with Lambda expressions, but I'll explain when I'm writing as I go. So I'm going to create an example of this for each. So I'm going to get rid of the original. In fact, actually, I'll just comment it out so we can compare the two. Um, and then I'm going to start writing the new for each. So here we can say names dot for each. Okay, so now you can see there's an example here from the Visual Studio um, assisted IntelliSense, which is saying you can pass in um, a name parameter, which will be the current iteration. And then you use this operator here, this lambda operator, which is an equal sign followed by um, a right bracket or a greater than sign, which basically says when you, for this parameter, I want to do a specific action on that parameter. And that's what the lambda operator does. It says, take a parameter, and then after this operator, do some work to it. Uh, so as an example, I'll say, I'm gonna use X, because that's what I typically use for, for an iterator. Um, so for each, so passing in X, which is the current uh, item, and then the lambda operator, which will say, I'm gonna do a task, I'm gonna perform some action on this, um, this passed in parameter. Uh, and then I can put in some square brackets to say, I'm gonna do some work. So you can see here, this is the basic template for our for each. We're passing in um, the current item that we're iterating on. We're using a Lambda operator to say, with that, do some work. And then it just means that we just have to put in what we want to do within these square brackets here. And that's, the, that's a very basic Lambda expression. I'll just put this on a new line so we can open it out. So you can see here it's already started to add in some potential actions that we can take. But if we want to mirror what we did before, we basically want to say that we want to print this out uh, to the console, but only if the name is Nick. So we would say instead of if name equals Nick, we're not using var name anymore, we're using x. That's just whatever the current item is. So we would say if x is equal to Nick, then console.writeline, and then it's just the same as the other implementation, but obviously changing the index variable to x. There you go. So that's another way of writing out the for each. And if I just run that, you can see we get the same result. If I uncomment the other version as well, you can see both of them return the same result. So it's just another way of writing out that for each. Um, so you could use any kind of list for this as long as it's part of the list T uh, object. So you could say, do the same thing with a set of objects. So you could say, let's, let's get a bit more complex here. So let's just create uh, another little class. Um, and it is a student. Okay. That's wrong. There we go. Public class student. So then we'll just say, we'll make some properties for the student. So we'll say name, big string name. set and um, int 
aging years. Cool. And then we'll make a new list. So in our process list, we'll get rid of all this. So we'll say var student list equals new list of type student. So we need to make some students. So I'll just put in, uh, I'll just make uh, two students. I'll do student one. And this is really not good code. I don't like putting numbers into variable names, but just for the sake of a demo, we'll say name equals Joe Blogs and age in years uh, equals 18. Okay, so we've got our first student. I don't know why I put that in as a string. And then we'll create another one, student two, new student, uh, name equals Michelle Obama. So Michelle Obama is going to night school. She's uh, thinking about a career change. And I don't actually know how old she is. And I know Michelle, I know you're watching, uh, so don't be offended. I'm gonna guess your age as 45. You're welcome. So, Michelle Obama, <laughs> age and years, 45, name, obviously Michelle Obama, and Joe Bloggs, 18. So what we could do is we could say in the list, look for any student, give us, write out the student if they're over 40. Sorry, Michelle, sorry to draw attention to it. So we can then say, um, oh, we've got to add it to the list, obviously. So student list dot add student one. Student two, cool. Okay, so we've got a list of students. So let's iterate over them. So student list dot for each. So then I'm going to pass in x again. That's that's the current student. And we're going to do some work on it. So we're going to say if uh, x dot age in years is greater than forty, then we can write them out, expose them. I'm going to put in an interpolated string here, so x. So the current student and their name is over 40. We'll put in another one there as well, just so that we've got a couple of students that are over, th over 40. So I'm going to put in Boris Johnson. He is also going back to school to learn how to style his hair. <laughs> and I'm going to guess that he's 52. I honestly don't know. Student three. There we go. So we should get Boris and Michelle being printed up to the console because they're over 40. And again, we've used this new, well not new, but different way of writing up the for each. So let's test that and see if it works. And there you go, Michelle Obama is over 40, Boris Johnson is over 40. So you can see it works with any generic type that can be kept in a list. Um, so give it a try. You know, when you, when you need to iterate over a list later on in, in, at some point, just try putting a dot after the object and seeing if for each is there because uh, if it is then you can leverage this new way of writing things. I quite like the way it looks, I think it reads a bit nicer um, and um, overall I prefer it. Uh, so I hope it's been useful, I hope I haven't offended Michelle uh, because I know she's a fan and um, Boris, uh, I don't think you care. Uh, and uh, so I will see you guys later for some more C Sharp tips and tricks.